Hi, Brian Whiten's filling in for Buck Lavasser. Well, it's the middle of winter. Most of the hunting seasons are behind us, along with Christmas and New Year's. Ahead of us, a variety of winter activities like ice fishing, snowmobiling, and cross-country skiing. The first week of the year felt like a great time for a vacation, and I'm not talking about Hawaii. I'm talking about a one-night trip back to summertime in the UP. So sit back, put your feet up, and enjoy the weather. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land, there is so much to discover when you're a long-time lover of northern Michigan. We packed our gear, threw the canoe on top of the truck, and hit the road. My wife Patty and I were headed for the Sylvania Wilderness. Situated just west of the town of Waters Meet, you'll find 30 square miles of rugged beauty known as the Sylvania Wilderness. Sylvania is located entirely within the bounds of the Ottawa National Forest. Within its borders lie 34 named lakes set against the backdrop of old growth forests. It represents one of only a handful of such areas left in the Midwest and the perfect UP location for those who seek the solitude of a wilderness experience. We've been to Sylvania several times over the years and look forward to it every time. Maybe because it's one of the most beautiful places in the Upper Peninsula. Or maybe it's for the wilderness and the solitude. Maybe because it's so simple. Some gear in a backpack, a tent, sleeping bags, a canoe, and a couple of fishing rods. I guess it really doesn't matter why. All I know is I crave it, and when I leave, I can't wait to get back. When you paddle away from shore, you leave behind a lot more than your vehicle. All those things that were so important at home are replaced by a new agenda. Setting up camp, gathering wood, cooking, and catching fish. It's quiet, it's peaceful, and for the next couple of days at least, it's home. Sylvania has been designated wilderness area since 1986. Prior to that, it was operated or ran mainly as a um, semi-primitive area. Primarily it's non-motorized uh, hiking and canoeing, water access campsites, um, very beautiful area, pristine. It's virgin timber. The area has never been logged for the most part. Um, you can get out and walk around and see a long ways through the woods because there's not a lot of underbrush. Well, with the perimeter area in the wilderness area, 25 to 30,000 acres, and it has 33 named lakes, most of them very deep, crystal clear lakes. Uh, the fishing is fabulous out here on these lakes, mostly because it's protected by regulations from the Michigan DNR in conjunction with the Forest Service, and not only the fishing regulations, but also the, the wilderness rules and regulations that are used to manage a wilderness area. Things such as no portage wheels allowed, uh, no motorized equipment. Sylvania goes a little bit further. Uh, no, no pack or saddle stock animals are allowed. So it's a very special area. Uh, we take our um, task of managing Sylvania wilderness area very seriously. And um, it gets a fair amount of use. And it takes uh, the presence of, of rangers and, and DNR uh, law enforcement people to make sure that it's safe for the future generations of Sylvania. If 
you're thinking about a trip to the Sylvania wilderness, but don't have a canoe, kayak, or any of the necessary equipment, not to worry. About a mile west of Waters Meet, you'll find Sylvania Outfitters. Not only can you rent everything you need, but they are a great base of operation and source of information for your adventure into the North Woods. Sylvania is a very popular area. And so, so if you're trying to really get away where you're not going to see anybody else, figure on a route that's away from the main uh, popular areas uh, where people are going to fish. So when you get out to, for example, out to Fisher Lake, perhaps you won't see anybody. There's little Moss Lake that perhaps nobody's been there in years. Uh, Germain, Trapper, uh, uh, it'd take work, but uh, that's where, the, where no one ever goes. wilderness area there are 50 wilderness campsites. Uh, most campsites have two sites at each one and they're normally around 100 yards or so apart so you do have privacy. In order to uh, camp in Sylvania from May 15th to September 30th you have to stop at the entrance station and register for the site. What you're forced to do when you forget your tent pegs. No camping is allowed without pre-registration. You also can uh, reserve sites ahead of time million uses for these. Through the National Reservation Service. Two thirds of the campsites in Sylvania are reservable online. The less you bring the better. You need to double up on stuff. So you'll take this bag, your sleeping bag came in, makes a great bag for hanging your food in the tree to keep it away from the bears. And you can, you can go online and reserve those campsites up to uh, 250 days in advance. Once you get that reservation, you still must stop at the entrance station and provide us with your, your proof of reservation of a site and then you must go watch a mandatory video before your permit is issued to go into the wilderness area and camp. Manufactured our own tent pegs. We have no phone on the ground or tent pegs. All, all campsites in Sylvania wilderness are basically a cleared area, uh, usually a couple hundred feet or more from the lake shore and it'll have a, um, a sign designating what campsite that is. It'll, it'll say, for example, uh, Squirrel 1 or Squirrel 2. And you follow the trail up, you'll find a cleared area for your tent. There will be a fire ring. And then behind that site, there'll be a trail that leads up to a wilderness latrine. Uh, keep in mind, no camping is allowed on the lakeshore. You must be at your campsite, and campfires are only allowed within a Forest Service constructed fire ring or grill. Constantly trying to not carry any more than you have to. You always want to bring along something to drink, the water, the Gatorade. So, freeze all that up first, becomes your ice to keep your food cold, and as it thaws out, you got something to drink. And then we're talking about the uh, no cans and bottles rule. And of course, absolutely no styrofoam, and you can easily, uh, before you come, package your food in, in resealable. Uh, reusable containers and or Ziploc bags. And eat. Sylvania has about 35 miles of hiking trails and portage trails. Um, it's, it's really a nice area to hike. Uh, those, those 35 miles are trails that are maintained by the Forest Service. As trees fall across them, we go out and clear them, but we have to clear them with non mechanical equipment so we use crosscut saws and axes and a lot of these trees are very large so you can imagine it takes a lot of time to clear these trails. In addition to that a lot of the lakes in Sylvania have um, game trails uh, that the, the animals, deer and things like that use so you can pretty much hike around a lot of the lakes because they have a game trail. They're not maintained by the Forest Service but you can, you can follow them. And uh, one other thing to keep in mind, uh, the trails in Sylvania are only cleared to the standard wilderness width of two feet. So they're only cleared to, to a, a tread width of two, two feet wide. Yeah, the special fishing regulations, uh, it was recognized early on 
that Sylvania was very special in, in its fisheries. Um, because of the nature of the lakes, they're mostly glacier formed lakes and they're deep and cold water and the fish don't reproduce as readily in these lakes as, as they would in other lakes, mainly because of the nutrient waters are not um, readily available of, of flowing in and out. And so they're slow growing fish, the populations of fish are not as high as some other areas and therefore the special regulations to preserve what we have uh, with the, the trophy bass fisheries where you, you know the rules are you cannot keep any bass regardless of size. Um, you cannot uh, use any live dead or preserved baits that includes like your, your power scented baits uh, and then other fish have size restrictions you can only keep one a day and it's, it's all there to protect the fisheries. Uh, it's it's kind of like uh, what the first uh, people to visit Sylvania would have found the fisheries to be like. It's pretty much the same as it's always been. Don't miss the Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. Four days of great bluegrass, country, folk, blues, and rock and roll. Over 25 bands, fun for the entire family. Carrion's welcome. Kids 12 and under free. Buy your tickets and campsites and find out everything you need to know online at woodtickfestival.com. That's woodtickfestival.com. The Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. Many people who have heard about Sylvania hear about especially its phenomenal smallmouth bass fishery and especially the catch and release aspect and the barbless hooks. Part of these rules, of course, is that you cannot have any live bait in these uh, special provision lakes. And the number one reason for that was so that you didn't introduce other types and species of fish than what are originally in the park. And also, because it's catch and release, they don't want the fish to actually swallow the bait. So they want them to strike it so that you can uh, release them. You know, many people uh, have thought, well, perhaps I'm ruining the lure when I pinch down the barbs. But when you pinch down just that sliver portion of the hook, it snaps off, leaves a little nub in there that still catches. But uh, I believe it enhances your lure. It, it makes it better on the fish and, and uh, especially if you have a partner and or if you got little kids, it's better on them because you can actually take the hook back out of them and it's a long ways to try to paddle out to get to an emergency room to, to get a hook out of somebody. We're talking about, you know, these big smallmouth bass that are famous, but there's plenty of opportunity that you could perhaps catch a trophy walleye in Whitefish Lake. You could catch a trophy northern pike in Crooked and or Whitefish Lake again and then even in Clark Lake you could catch a trophy lake trout. Another reason for the um, slow growth of the of the fish in the Sylvania waters are due to the fact that the Lake Superior Mississippi Continental Divide runs through Sylvania so uh, along, along between Clark Lake and Loon Lake uh, any waters uh, coming out of Sylvania flow to the south to the Mississippi River, anything to the north flows to Lake Superior. So it has a watershed uh, going north and south and really no, no waters to speak of coming in to feed the lakes, which is why they're so dependent on, on the amount of snow we get in the winter and the amount of rain we get in the summer. So the lake levels, uh, they go up and down with, with what type of weather we get on any given year. Uh, Sylvania has very diverse uh, wildlife. Um, of course, you're going to have your uh, white-tailed deer. It doesn't have many deer, but it has quality deer. I've seen a lot of nice bucks come out of the Sylvania during the hunting season. A healthy population of black bear. Uh, occasionally, you'll see a moose come through the area. There are wolves out here. 
Of course, we have bald eagles and osprey and all types of different owls and other types of birds. You know, Sylvania is also famous for its eagles and its loons, but they are very much concerned about loons being free to nest and, and be, uh, not be harassed. And so there is a rule that you cannot be on an island until after July 15th. And it's not unusual for the loons to come check you out. You'll be fishing and uh, up pops a loon maybe just 10 feet away from you. And, and it's funny, if you ignore them, they, they almost seem to want your attention. As the afternoon faded away and the pasty we had for lunch wore off, our stomachs told us it was time to build a fire and whip up some dinner. Before portaging into Mountain Lake, we did spend a little time on Crooked Lake, where regular Michigan fishing rules apply. But we had no luck. So what's for dinner when fish is not on the menu? Well, venison, of course. gradually gave itself up to the night as we sat by the fire and watched the sun set across the lake. We sat up and watched the last of the light from the dying fire flicker on the trees. The only sounds? A couple of loons and the occasional crackle of the fire. I think it would be nearly impossible not to relax. best parts of camping is waking up to the sounds of the birds and the smell of coffee. A new day lies ahead. Okay, this morning we're gonna make something called bannock or fry bread. Or I like to call campfire bread. breakfast. Something else you might want to try that I've learned from a friend of mine up in Ontario. You got some dirty pans, throw in some coals, push them around a little bit. Add a little water. Clean the whistle. So, you know, when you're out there, and uh, you know, you leave civilization in on the boat landings behind, just imagine what it was like two or 300 years ago, and especially when you get to a portage, which is typically the shortest distance be between the, the lakes, that uh, perhaps for thousands of years, Native Americans have been following this very same path and uh, pondering how, uh, how great it is!
Well, the time had come to make our way back out. This trip was a short one, but then again, they're never long enough. Sylvania is a true Upper Peninsula gem. Old growth forest ruled by trees that have been here longer than any of us. Water that's been crystal clear since the beginning of time, and it's still that way. 18,327 acres of true UP wilderness. Some people may be intimidated by wilderness, but there's no need to be. The remedy for that is simply become part of it. Don't just pass through it, become part of it. The trees, the water, the wildlife, and look close. Chances are you'll see things that you haven't seen before. Things you can't see out the window of a car. Maybe things that are not photo worthy. A tree that fell just because it was old. Or a stump that tells a story of hundreds of years. Not just a bird, but a loon doing what it does every day to survive. A fish going about its annual routine. These are all simple things, but maybe that's what Sylvania is about. The simple things. Nothing mechanical, nothing electronic, just pure nature at its best. Yes, it's time to leave, but I'm not leaving empty-handed. I leave with the sound of loons echoing in my head. With the smell of wood smoke drifting through the trees. The sound of the birds that greet you at dawn. And the satisfaction of another short but great adventure. Yep, I leave with just enough memories to make me want to come back again. And again, and again. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week right here on a Pro Michigan's very own Discovering.